Apocalypse Run is a roguelike strategy RPG with the vibes of Mad Max and a combat style that adds to its flair. You spend most of your time here battling it out on the highways of a post-apocalyptic USA. Spending action points, you'll move around the grid, shoot wastelanders, ram into them, toss junk behind you, and more. One of my favorite features is how much I enjoyed watching the combat unfold. Cars moving around and smashing into each other, dodging things and wiggling back into place, blasting vehicles ahead of you and running over the remains as the convoy always moves forwards. Everything interacts with each other, and it never got old to watch. You always start combat either in front or behind of your opponents. It's as if one group is trying to slow down or catch up to the other, and even when planning what to do next, everything's still racing forward straight down the highway. Nothing ever feels at a standstill. Although if you were to strip down the game to its basics, it is pretty much a regular grid-based combat, but with the visuals in place, everything is always feeling dynamic and alive. It also helps that everything you equip further plays into this idea of combat on the highway. Most of the big weapons are mounted on the hoods and can only shoot in the direction your cars are facing. Anything that you toss behind affects every vehicle that passes over it, with some even swerving out of the way to avoid it. Plus, you have your driver of the car that can swing or shoot out of their window with whatever they have equipped, and the same thing goes for the passenger. What really sets Apocalypse Run apart from your average roguelike is that most roguelikes typically start with a new run every time you play. With each loss, you learn from your mistakes, or maybe you unlock new things that help you get further ahead in your next run after. But what Apocalypse Run does differently, and one of my favorite elements of the game, is how it breaks up the roguelike structure into three chapters. Whatever people and vehicles you manage to bring to the end of a chapter, Chapter, become the pool of what you can choose from for the start of the next chapter. One of my gripes with the game is that many of the locations get repetitive pretty early on. They're designed to feel unique and distinct, which they are, but that's also unfortunately their weak point as there's not very many of them for the amount of locations you visit on a typical run. Even on my very first run of chapter 1 and 2, I saw a lot of the same locations pop up multiple times. There's one location in particular where you find two cats on a roof wanting to trade one of your people for their car, and every time it's the exact same dialogue and reasoning for wanting to make the trade. Sure, the cars you trade for are different sometimes, but some variety to the dialogue and the reasoning behind the trades would add a lot more to exploring all of these places. There's a lot of fun and quirky energy when it comes to the dialogue, and I'd love to see that expanded on, because reading through all of it was one of my favorite things my first playthrough. I do also have to say that chapter 2 is a lot longer than it should be. Chapter 1 has you running from a big baddie and depending on your experience with the game, it can take about 20 minutes to an hour to complete, while Chapter 2 gives you the entirety of the country to explore, and my average run took about two and a half hours, which is a long time for a roguelike game, especially if you lose everything near the end of that run and you have to start over again from Chapter 1. Also note that my first two runs of Chapter 2 took about three and a half hours each with reading all the text of everything that popped up as I went. I will also say that Chapter 3 is, it's, it's an alright length, but it still feels on the shorter side, although it's possible it just feels that way because of how long Chapter 2 is. I think the problem with Chapter 2 is that there's no time constraint to go with its massive area to explore. It doesn't matter how long you take, and because of that, you can experience most of what the game has to offer in a single run. Although some of the fights you can find yourself in are pretty difficult, so spending more time exploring does come with its own set of risks. I kind of wish Chapter 2 had been split up into a couple more chapters. I feel like the main quest of it, although it would be a little bit repetitive, could have been broken up a little bit. I really enjoyed the aspect of building up pools of different characters and vehicles, and then moving them from chapter to chapter, and I would love to see more done with that. So far, I'm really happy with Apocalypse Run. The game's been in early access not for very long, but the foundations of the game are already solid. I hope a lot of other games take inspiration from how Apocalypse Run does its combat, and I would love to see more like this. If you like roguelikes or games with turn-based tactical combat, then I think it's definitely worth something to pick up right now. I'm a huge fan of strategy and turn-based tactic games, so I'll be keeping an eye on this throughout the course of its development, and hopefully it'll expand and grow enough that it'll be worth to do another video on. 